What's up guys, Nathan here, and today I'm gonna give you my four simple tips to win at online poker every single time. Let's jump right into this. All right guys, so many of you know I'm well known for having some of the highest winnings of all time in online poker, specifically at these small and mid stakes games. So I figured it was finally time that I made a video here walking you through my fundamental strategies to have success in online poker to get you quickly winning at the poker tables online if you're currently having difficulties. Now I do need to mention that nobody wins at online poker every single time, but I think if you follow these four simple steps, this will start giving you more consistent success. And later on in the video, I'm also going to walk you through some example hands to help illustrate these points all better for you. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. These are the four simple tips to start winning at online poker. So tip number one is to only play strong hands. Now guys, one of the biggest reasons why people do not have success at online poker in particular is because they play all sorts of bad hands at bad seats at the poker table. I'm gonna talk about the seats in a second, but let's just talk about the hands right now. They play hands that give themselves a mathematical disadvantage throughout the hands, and that's the exact opposite of what we want to be doing. We want to be playing certain hands hands at the poker table that are going to give us a strong mathematical advantage, which is going to lead to long-term success for us in online poker. So I would suggest only playing these hands. That would be pocket aces down to pocket twos. So that's pocket aces, pocket kings, pocket queens, pocket jacks, all the way down to pocket twos. And then I would suggest playing ace king, ace queen, ace jack, king queen, king jack, and now only if they are suited, these remaining hands. Ace, 10, suited. Now, just to be clear, when I say suited, I'm talking about both cards of the same suit. So for example, ace of spades, 10 of spades. So ace, 10, suited, ace, nine, suited, queen, jack, suited, jack, 10, suited, nine, eight, suited, and eight, seven, suited. Now, some people are gonna be screaming from the mountaintops at this point, Nathan, this is insane. How can I only play these hands? But I assume that you clicked on this video because you wanted to learn how to win consistently and quickly at online poker, right? Guys, unfortunately, the cold, hard reality and the truth of winning consistently at online poker is that it really is just a long-term math game. There are some psychological aspects, which I'm going to get into later on in this video. But the bottom line is that if you consistently put yourself in a strong, mathematically advantageous position, you're going to win over the long run. And therefore, you have to develop the discipline to only play these strong hands. Now, a lot of people say, but oh, Nathan, I get bored, though. And here's the great thing about online poker, though, is you can just add more tables. In my heaviest grinding days, I was known as playing upwards of 20 or 30 tables at a time. Now, I definitely would not suggest that. In today's games, it's a little bit crazy and I definitely was not at my best playing that amount of tables. But the point remains, if you are getting bored only playing strong hands like this on one table, try adding another table. If you're still finding yourself having lots of downtime, add another table. This is the beautiful thing about online poker, guys. You can add more tables and multiply your winnings in the process and fix your boredom problem. So let's move on to point number two now. And this is to pay close attention to your position at the poker table. Like I said, we just talked about the hands to play. And I also mentioned it depends on the seat that you're seated at at the poker table. This is something that so many people disregard. And this is something that actually took me many years to understand and really learn on a deeper level as well. And when I finally did, I saw my results in online poker start skyrocketing. So guys, First thing you need to know is that not all seats at the poker table were created equal. Some seats are far more profitable than others, in particular the cutoff and the button. And I'm gonna put the image on the screen right now so you guys can actually see the poker table and understand exactly what I'm talking about. The cutoff and the button are the two seats at the poker table where you should be absolutely inclined to play the majority of your hands. If it's anywhere close, you've got some sort of suited connector like eight, seven, of hearts, for example, you want to play it from these seats and you want to even play more hands that I didn't mention in the previous slide here. And the reason why, once again, guys, these are the statistically proven highest winning seats at the poker table. You can just use a program like Poker Tracker, which I'll have links to in the description below, and you can filter in the program itself to show you exactly where you are winning the most. And now, of course, on the flip side, you want to limit the amount of hands that you play from the other seats of the table, specifically the blinds and early position, middle positions. Now, I do need to point out that there's some hands, like we talked about before, like pocket aces, pocket 
kings, ace king, extremely strong hands like this. It really doesn't matter what seat you are at at the poker table. You need to be playing these hands in any position because these hands just have such tremendous strength on their own. But for all of those other hands that are anywhere close, guys, you need to have tremendous bias at the poker table to where you choose to play. If you're in the cutoff or the button, you want to be much more inclined to play your hand and you want to be much more inclined to fold if you're at the other seats. All right, let's jump into some actual strategy now. Here is tip number three, which is when in doubt, be aggressive. Guys, what you need to know in order to beat online poker. And once again, this is something that took me many years to figure out. And that's why I'm hopefully this will give you guys a shortcut to success is to give people a reason to fold. This is something that I talk about in depth in my brand new Elite Poker Training University. I'll have links to that in the description below. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of example hands in that where I walk you step by step how to consistently apply pressure against online poker players in particular and win much more. But let's walk you through an example hand right now in this video. You raise up ace jack of hearts on the button and a typical tight player calls you in the small blind. Tight players, just one player. The flop comes down with a nine four deuce rainbow. When I say rainbow, I'm talking about three different suits, this is diamond, spade and club. There's no heart on there and there's no ace or jack. Honestly, guys, we don't have much at all on this board, but when the tight player checks to us, we should absolutely be betting again here. Guys, one rule of thumb to always remember when you're playing online poker, live poker, any poker, doesn't matter. And here is the rule. You are going to miss the flop two out of three times. Two out of three times when you're up against somebody at the poker table on the flop, they don't have anything. So that is why it is such a big mistake here to not bet when they've literally opened up the door here for us already showing weakness we know that two out of three times this player doesn't have anything so why would you not want to give them a reason to fold their nothing especially when we have nothing and that's a great result so that is why you should be making what we call a continuation bet here. It doesn't need to be a big amount. Say the pot, for example, is $10. Just bet $4, bet $5. Bottom line, guys, here, just give them a reason to fold. But let's assume this player calls us on the flop here. Let's go see a turn. Turn comes with a king of spades. Tight player checks to us again. What should we be doing? Guys, this is a classic situation where you want to keep your foot on the gas pedal and make what we call a double barrel in this situation. The reason why is because the king of spades is an excellent scare card talk about this in all of my poker books and and in my new elite poker training university as well is that we want to consistently be applying pressure especially on cards on the turn and river that are going to be scary for them for example if this player called us on the flop with a hand like eight nine or pocket sevens for example they're really not gonna like this king on the turn. And what we know about online poker players in particular, especially the more tighter players like this, is they're often risk averse. They're often playing other tables and therefore they are often looking for reasons to fold. They don't wanna get all their money in the middle without a very strong hand. So once again, guys, give them that reason. Make another bet here and give them a chance to fold their hand now and we take down the pot uncontested without even having to show our hand. Guys, this is literally where the rubber meets the road in online poker if you wanna start getting much better results. You have to start taking away more pots like this when you don't have anything and taking the more aggressive route is almost always going to be your surest path to success. In that regard, let's jump into point number four and that is to please, please guys, don't bluff the fish. You know, while I just talked about applying pressure versus these tighter kind of regular opponents as we talk about, we need to make a clear, clear difference, a clear, clear delineation between the regular players and the recreational players. They are worlds apart and we need a completely different strategy to beat each one. The recreational players, they're not looking for a reason to fold. They like to call you with any pair 
there, any draw. As I always mention, they'll call you down with two napkins if they like the look of those napkins. Guys, you do not want to be bluffing these players. This is one of the biggest reasons why people lose at online poker. By the way, if you don't know who the recreational fishy players are at the poker table, you can just use a program like Poker Tracker. I've talked about it many times. I've used this program for over 10 years in online poker. I'll include links for it in the description below. And basically, it just puts numbers on your online poker table screen. And it basically tells you who your fishy friends are at the table. So let's jump into an example here. Let's use the exact same one. You raise up ace, jack of hearts on the button. And one of our fishy friends calls us in the small blind. Flop comes down, same flop, nine, four, deuce. Fishy friend checks to us. We should be betting. Now, a lot of people say, but Nathan, you just said don't bluff these players. Well, here's the difference. On the flop, making a continuation bet here should be a standard play in position when you were the one last to act in most situations, regardless of player type. Because remember, two out of three times, they didn't hit the flop. Let's give them a reason to fold often as well for betting smaller amounts on the flop. So, you know, pot's $10 here. We can just bet $4 and try to get this player out of the way. However, let's just assume once again that this player does call us on the flop. Let's go to the turn. Same turn card, king of spades. Our fishy friend checks to us. What should we be doing? Well, here is going to be the clear difference between this hand and the previous one. You want to just be checking here. Guys, do not try to run the big bluff versus the proverbial calling station at the poker table. You need to understand that we need a very different strategy to beat this kind of player. You want to beat your fishy friends at the poker table when you have a strong hand. That's when you want to bet big. I talk about this at length in my first book, Crushing the Micro Stakes. You bet big for value versus these players and you do not bluff them because the problem is, is they're just going to call you down in this spot if they got a nine, if they got a four, if they got a deuce. Maybe they even hit the king on the flop because recreational players love to just call you with two random cards on the flop, like king seven or something like that. So guys, please do not try to bluff these players. You're going to end up putting yourself on tilt and causing yourself undue stress at the online poker tables. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel here if you want to see more poker strategy videos like this and also like the video if you found it helpful. And lastly, make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. That'll be the top link in the description below. Thanks all for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.